If my sister is found delinquent in her duty, then we defend the Bastion. The Dragon Emperor's territories are vast, varied, and fractured. Amongst the stoic Cathayans, whose architectural prowess is beyond compare, skulk creatures of foul intent. The vampiric curse siphons life from the land, which is trampled beneath the heavy boot of orc warbands, and, burrowing deep into the heart of this once great nation, a subtle infection of Skaven. Immortal Empires isn't all sunshine and roses. It's a beta, there are plenty of problems, and we'll highlight some of them in this video, but I will say, this version of Cathay is one of the most stunning campaign maps I've ever seen. It's the new gold standard when it comes to both functional design and aesthetic beauty. It's gorgeous, and it's a new home of Nakai the Wanderer, who has long had a rather unpleasant campaign. So I guess the question is, is it fixed now? Uh, kind of? Some of the old issues are gone, some new ones have taken its place, although I think those are more Warhammer 3 related than Nakai himself. I'm having plenty of fun with it, but it's also one of the easiest campaigns I've ever played, and I'll talk about why in a little bit. For now, let's soak in the sights and sounds and let you get your bearings for an area of the map I think a lot of people will gravitate towards, just because of how dang pretty it is. And I guess we can start with the Great Canal, which is, I think, new to Warhammer lore. I don't remember hearing any references to it before. But, uh, you can't see all of it because of the fog of war. Looks really cool, and yes, a lot of these rivers are navigable, so if you're Loki or Fellheart, your Black Ark should have plenty of fun in this neck of the woods. So, the Skaven have kind of been useless. It's turn 50, and they only have slaves. Uh, this is kind of the issue that I've been seeing a lot in general, is that difficulty in Immortal Empires right now is not very high. The AI is really passive on pretty much every difficulty imaginable. All the way up to Legendary, they don't really want to fight. I think we can all agree anti-player bias can be incredibly annoying. And back when the game first launched, seeing a faction sail across the map and leave their homeland undefended just so it can raise your minor summit to troll you is stupid. No one wants that. It should never have been a thing. But right now, the AI intentionally avoids conflict at all costs, even when they've got three stacks. If they're like, uh, maybe we can't beat them. They won't take the fight. They very rarely engage in open field battles unless they have an overwhelming advantage. And for the most part, they just kind of turtle up and sit inside their settlements and it leads to situations like this, where I can just spam auto resolves against isolated targets, destroy them utterly. To be fair, Nakai's stack right now is very strong. Gold Chevron cross scores is not fun for Snickets to fight, for the Skaven to fight, unless they have a lot of rattling guns. But frankly, they should have better armies at turn 50 than the ones they have right now. Our boy's a bit of a beast. I mean, he's always been strong, but <laughs> he's level 34 at turn 50, which, again, it's a lot easier to rank up in Warhammer 3 than it was in Warhammer 2, because when you fight those big battles, you get way more XP. It levels up quite a bit quicker. Uh, we have Croak 2, which means that this stack is pretty much unassailable from the AI. Even on Legendary, I think they just wouldn't have much chance of beating us in a straight-up fight with really anything they could throw at us. Across the gores have like 45% missile resist. We have Croak who's dropping big fat bombs. Doesn't quite have the winds of magic pool he did in game two, but he has barrier and some other things to maybe make up for it a little bit. I don't think he's quite as strong as he was in Warhammer 2, but Croak is still a beast. He's still terrifying. And we're probably gonna show some battles with him very soon. Uh, I think we need HP on our Carnosaur, our honored elder, Scarvet, and you know what? Let's take a look at the Temple of the Old Ones. Because I think this is a feature that a lot of people are curious about. I would not be able to tell you all the changes that have been made with it. We don't have patch notes yet. But here is the basic overview of this mechanic. So basically when you conquer a settlement and give it to the defenders of the old ones, you can dedicate it to a certain temple. Either to Quetzal, Itzel, or Zolanka. 
Quetzal, we are working towards right now because of the protection of Quetzal ability, makes a unit unbreakable and immune to damage, which is pretty dope. We currently have Quetzal's Esteem, which gives melee defense, missile resist to our Crash Scores and Temple Guard. And we can spend Old One's Shekels to get faction-wide buffs for five turns. One of them for Itzel gives 25% extra movement range for all armies for five turns. Beasts of Itzel allows you to summon Razor on a hunting pack. Haven't invested much in Itzel or Zolanka yet. Itzel, I think, is kind of trash. I seem to remember it was the go-to one in Warhammer 2. To be honest, I really can't remember. Zolanka's patronage, though, there's some good stuff here. Wins of magic capacity plus 25 is a pretty big deal considering we're now capped at 100. So adding to that is very nice. Yeah, here it is. Jurisdiction of Beasts, extra 25% movement range, and income from post-battle loot, 50% extra. That's pretty good. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to buff your faction into the stratosphere, which is nice. And of course, we can also use rights to supplement ourselves and the defenders of the Great Plan, who in this corner of the map, I think it's the biggest buff they've had since they were launched in Warhammer 2 with the Hunter and the Beast. It's just the fact that there's not a lot of natural threats to attack them. They're in a corner of the world. They haven't been under pressure from really anything, and I think that's one of the reasons why this campaign has been so easy. So that's the basic overview. Of course, we can get some blessed units on each of these trees as well. But I think we want to get into a battle, and the first one we'll do is a quest battle that was actually played a little bit ago. I love this freaking map, dude. It's like the only map in the entire game that truly looks like a full temple city. Nakai, with his inspiring speeches once again. So well known for that. Oh, some burning alignments. Hit something, please. Oh, they were, they were horrible. Orbital bombardments missed everything. I've actually got to get my ass moving because if either Gorok or the Slan Mage Priest die, I just straight up lose the quest battle. Gorok will be fine. He's unkillable. Slan Mage Priest can get blown up pretty easy by rattling guns and stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I think, is split my forces. Four or five crash war units, maybe a couple Saurus and a Basilodon can go down to the east and help out the Sun Mage Priest to get rid of those Rattling Guns quickly. They at least have the speed to close the gap and get over there to help out in time. Nakai, the Scarvet, and Lord Croak need to go up top because you've got a terrifying Vampire Coast Army to deal with. Very high tier, a lot of crabs, Death Guard, Halberds, Rotting Leviathans. Not a lot of shooting though, which is good. MX on Barbs might be able to get some nasty penetrating shots in the depth guard if they can get line of sight anyway. And that Quetzal ability for the Scar Vet could be huge. I want them to blob up, right? I'm gonna send them in, make them invulnerable, and then Croak can drop the hammer. I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Hopefully that's the plan. There are some handguns, those probably need to die. So yeah, he cannot take damage while that thing is all blinky and shiny. Should do some damage, clear out some of the handguns and zombies anyway. Nakai's here. I think they're gonna take a lot of damage in this battle. I don't think there's any getting around that. They basically have to face tank while Croak drops the bombs. And there are halberds, there are handguns, there are crabs. All those can hurt them when I don't have Ketzel the Pretzel activated. Or the ward save ability from Croak. We're diving in, we're going in, baby. All right, where are my cross scores at? The Crocodile Doomstack is on the approach. Slan Mage Priest is, of course, already down to half HP. Rattling guns seem to have done some damage. This burning alignments might have done something, though, which is good. I, I need to get moving. <laughs> if that Slan Mage Priest gets burst down by Rattling Guns in the first two minutes of this battle, I'm gonna be pissed. Because there's not a whole lot I could have done about that. I don't have any healing in this army right now. At some point, I'll probably work on getting a Skink Oracle in this stack just for some Earth Bloods. Problem with having the Kai as your starting faction leader is that 
You can't turn him into a slime mage priest. You can't regrowth. Lizardmen don't have any life casters that are heroes. They just have some particular healing spells like Earth Blood, which is not the best way to get your dinos back up to full HP. Croak does have regen himself, which is good. So if he gets bursted through his barrier shield, you can get some health for him. I think that's true for all Slan Mage Priests now. I think they all get barrier. I think they all get regen later on in their tree. Okay, Rattling Guns super duper need to die because they're going to blow up the dinos as well. I think I should be able to push through here. Just help an abomination on the way in. Rattling Guns getting some nasty shots into that engine of the gods. I'm not sure it's going to survive this. Oh, the cooldown on Croak's spell is just non-existent. It's crazy. Scarvet is starting to take some damage, as is Nakai. Running Leviathan and Death Guard. It's a kind of brutal combo, so I need to blow him up. But I need to kill the Chaff out first. Alright, Rattling Guns have been silenced. That is good. So like some of the undead made their way down below. Drive that supreme spell shield of the old ones and get the Scarvet around. If we can attack the crab from behind, I don't think it will last very long. Well, as with despair, let's push through. Kind of have ogre syndrome with a stack like this one. Big time issues getting on target because you keep bumping into your own stuff and dry humping them into submission. But the Scarvet has unbreakable and immune to damage now, fighting the rotting Leviathan, so that's good. In terms of healing, we could also go for Rev Crystals pretty soon. I don't know that that's quite as good on a Croxagore stack. I mean, it's definitely strong. Actually, yeah, it's probably better than the Arc of Sotek. We have plenty of anti-infantry killing potential already. All right, this first army is pretty much dead. I don't think I need to cast any more Croak spells. The Amax and Barbs around. Eh, not been super impressed with them. May dump them later on. I wanted to play around with them because you guys have seen how much they do to infantry. And it's nice to have some shooting and something to actually micro because otherwise a cross gore doom stack can get a little bit uh, mindless, should I say? Haven't invested much in the sacred cross gores yet, mostly because I haven't even built the building for them. The regular cross gores are already gold chevron, so I'm not really planning on getting rid of them. Only need a couple for, for dealing with demons, and frankly, I'm not even fighting any demons right now. It's basically just Skaven and uh, Loki or Felhart over the last 30 or so turns. Maybe someone dead. Probably gonna have to deal with them soon. Vampires of Jiang Sheng. Ickbolt Kankard getting his ass beat. Oh my god, could you imagine a Doom Sphere, a nuke on this blob? Consider my pizza delivered. That's a juicy blob of death guard. I didn't place that perfectly. I actually charged forward a little bit too early with my crossing orders. But hey, I can drop it again. Sweet. <laughs> Thank God for Lord Croak. Luther's sitting on top shooting his pistols. He's gonna be out of ammo soon though. I don't think the Slan Mage Priest or Gorok are in danger. What is in danger is my stuff, because I'm face tanking the Vampire Coast army right now. Oh god, Croak is getting blown up even through barrier. He doesn't have regen yet, so he's not gonna be able to heal. I need to get him out of there. Make him invulnerable for a bit, because all the Necrofax Colossus are trying to target him down. That is one thing I've noticed. If the AI does one thing really well right now in battle, it's shooting your high value stuff. If you're Slon, enter their Arc of Fire, everything is going to shoot at it. Everything. So I need to get Croak just completely out of range and do some juke in here. And because my allies are absolutely useless, they are not fighting the actual threat right now, which is blowing everybody up. They're fighting the one health and abomination that's completely surrounded by 30 units, which seems a bit overkill to me. Oh, it's not the HPA. That's the HPA. I don't even know what they're fighting over there. Right. 
Need to silence these Gundams. Tall Geese is making me real sad. It's making Croak real sad. And when Croak is sad, everybody's sad. This is not part of the great plan. All right, I think we got him. We got the full surround off. I don't think we're gonna lose anything else. Luther should die. And then we'll have the Golden Tributes, which is a perfect vigor AOE buff for Crash Scores. And for anything hanging out around Nakai. Who is that half HP? I'd love to get him a healing item or a healing trait. Oh, he's gonna straight up. Oh, he got sent flying! The mass wasn't high enough. All right, Coasts are dead. I'll drop a few more bombs on the mortars in the back line once Croak is in a safer position, but this battle is over. Those dastardly Jade Custodians betrayed me. They went after Defenders of the Great Plan and that is just not something I can abide. A lot of Jade Warriors, a lot of Archers as well. Trading in terms of the infantry engagement, it's gonna be a little bit challenging because Jade Warriors are kind of tanky and Saurus aren't gonna cut through them that fast. And Fire Magic, unless I can get them to Blob, probably not gonna kill them too quick either. Burning Head's not great versus armor, but we'll see. This is why we play Immortal Empires though, man. Lizard Men in and amongst the Cherry Blossoms and Cathayan architecture in a new world. It's gorgeous, it really is. Unfortunately, I can't get very many close-ups in battle. All these are being recorded live, so it's kind of hard. I don't, I don't want to lose units just because I'm zooming in. It's kind of dumb. But we can get these at the start of battles, and it's a good-looking game. It is. All right, so we're going to get the Heaven's Priest. This could actually be perfect because they're going to come out and be forced into this choke point. This is a really cool map, by the way. I mean, just gorgeous aesthetically, obviously, but reinforcements are going to have a long and arduous road to march while getting blown up by vortexes, I think. So they're going to be forced into that cliffside, into that choke point. Meanwhile, Source and Cross Gores have a lot to deal with here. So, Jade Warriors, a lot of crossbowmen, a lot of archers. If I get in range, all those archers will shoot at the Slan Mage Priest, so... Probably need to get some shields on my Saurus here, but they're just- they're silver chevrons, so I don't want to- I don't want to just dump them, right? Like, it doesn't really make sense. Shields are good, but they're not worth losing all that veterancy for nothing. At some point, I'll probably just upgrade anyway. But... How do we do this? I think we just need to engage all the way across the front. I- I'm not really going to be able to force blobs. I think they have too much shooting. And the AI doesn't really like to do that as much anyway, at least in terms of a 1v1 engagement. When they're coming in as reinforcements, they're more likely to. So I might be able to abuse that on the other stack. But right now, I think, yeah, just engaging all along the front is probably the right call. Just send them in. And we'll see what the Slan Mage Priest can do. Even if Burning Head doesn't do a lot to 90 armor of Jade Warriors, it can still cause leadership penalties, which stacked up with the Terror could be pretty good. Ooh, yeah, Piercing Bolts of Burning Overcast right there could be real nice. That'll do some damage for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was juicy. That one felt pretty good. Okay, reinforcements are on their way in, so that will split my attention for a second here. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, we can definitely get some good chain lightnings here. Oh, this could be, oh, this could be really fun. I really want them to get funneled a little bit more into that street, that causeway as they march up. But for now, we can drop a few vortexes. We have plenty of winds of magic to work with. Uh, that's not going to be amazing, but not terrible either. 3.6 Ronkin. Easy piece. What do I do with my slon? Still have 30 second cooldown on the snake drop. We're busting through pretty easy. Yeah, we'll burning head that. I'm not sure it's gonna be incredibly impactful, but we'll see. 
I am more worried about this incoming reinforcement section, though. Yeah, those Jade Warriors do not care about Burning Head at all. Even Overcast, they just... There's just, like, no AP on that spell. My stummy is grumbling, I'm hungry! A lot of cafeans to eat after this one, I think. We got a lot of work to do. Okay. Okay, yes. Yes, this is what I wanted. Yes, please just continue the blob. Oh my god. They're trying so desperately to get here in time to save their friends, but they're never gonna make it. Chain Lightning's actually not too good for that either. I mean, I did some HP damage, but I think we might want to save for some piercing bolts of burning as they come in. Let's get the flank off. Line them up. It'll be a little careful with Slon Mage Priest. Don't want him to overextend, but about to get a full surround on the initial army. And then once the Winds of Magic return, the Magma Storm shall be unleashed. I don't know how to use the cancel ability here. Like, there's nothing that's getting focus fire down, right? I mean, Slaughter being shot, but he's not going to take any damage because of barrier. Do I burning head this? Or do I piercing bolts of burning this? There's so many... I mean, there's such a long line. Burning head could be huge there. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think we pretty much have to piercing or uh, burning head this right. Like they're just in such a long line, it could hit so many units. Oh, oh, was it good? Eh, kind of. <laughs> it wasn't amazing. <laughs> piercing bolts probably would have killed more units overall, but that was still fun. Oh, and what what I can do here maybe is get a crash score to just get them blobbed up and then drop them piercing bolts. I mean, it's just a, a storm of magic right now. This is brutal. That poor reinforcing army doesn't really have... I mean, they don't, they don't know what to do. I like map design like this. It's kind of asymmetrical and forces both the player and the AI to behave differently than they normally would. It's not just a flat piece of terrain. A lot to think about here. Kind of reminiscent of some of the Medieval 2 maps from the days of yore. With that said, though... Uh, I would not say the AI is handling it particularly well with the reinforcing army anyway. First army did pretty well, all things considered. This army, not so much. Archers are trying to shoot my single entities, but forcing themselves into really bad positions that will make them a target for spells. Gotta go piercing bolts, right? I gotta do it, right? I'd love to overcast it, but just a, a normal one should be fine here. That's gonna be the best spell yet. I almost feel bad. Oh, I definitely should have overcast. I don't remember how much more Winds of Magic it is to do it. Uh, let's pop a Quetzal Pretzel on maybe Croxagore or something. I don't even know. I can't really use the ability effectively here. Yeah, I would have had enough for an overcast piercing bolt pretty quick, actually, because of greater arcane conduit. Should have done it. Now they're trying to get some cast. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The Basilodon Arcasotech with the snake drop. I mean, ideally, you'd want to move them a little bit deeper into the enemy formation, but they just tear routed instantly anyway, so who cares? Burning head to make sure they continue running. Now we need to grind through all these 90 armor jade warriors, which is the tougher... Oh my god, the archers are just... The splintering off into the wind. I still have 38 power reserves, which is pretty nice. So plenty more casting on the way. Will it be necessary? Probably not. Just terror out for me. This army is going to need upgrades soon, for sure. Now that we can take all of... Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to war with Burning Nomads, but for sure the Jade Custodians are going to die for their betrayal. We'll be able to take all their settlements. 
And Nakai does have some powerful texts on his tree that you use old one shekels for that increase the vassal tribute you get quite tremendously. You get huge increases in income once you invest in those. So we'll be able to buy some real nice units very soon here. Probably not going to stick with Soros for forever. They are kind of getting their ass beat, but they've done a lot of killing today, so I don't blame them. And I think it's going to be a mass route very soon. Let's get like one more cast in on something after that burning head. That looks pretty good. Minus eight leadership should cause some more terror routes back there. That's a victory. Okay. I mean, that's going to just cripple. Going to cripple the Jade Custodians. They should not have betrayed me. They should not have gone after the Defenders of the Great Plan. We're going to run them down. And go back to the campaign map. So, yeah, they're freaking dead. So now rule. Let's look at your skill tree. Calming Cogitation. Arcane Convergence. Extra Power Reserve when increasing. Banishment. Missile Resist might be important for him, actually. Oh, we don't have Greater Arcane Conduit yet. For some reason, I thought we did. Well, we'll get that soon, regardless. I don't like the change to Magical Reserves. Plus five is so pathetic. Like, it literally does nothing. Plus five to your reserve. That's like one... It's not even one Wind Blast. I think Wind Blast is six wins of magic. Now we have Greater Arcane Conduit. That's good. Okay, um... Some of the changes do feel like... Eh, seems like they're just trying to take a little bit of the fun out of the game. And you're like, why? But I think some people have raised a good point that they are making this game really kind of easy and not necessarily appealing to strategy game players so much as making this kind of more pulpy. And to an extent, I understand the argument. And to an extent, I think that it would be good to start having to make some actual difficult choices. I'm not sure that's a good example of it. But for sure, Immortal Empires right now, in all my campaigns, on all the difficulties I've played, besides the ones where I'm trying out the endgame scenarios with Ungrim, they've been really easy. This has been the easiest one because I'm in the corner of the map and I don't have to worry about infrastructure at all, really. A lot of auto-resolves. Defenders of the Great Plain have not been threatened by anybody. And we're going to be able to make a huge empire here down in Cathay without too much worry at all. I haven't watched Legends, this is Total War campaign with Cetra, but from what I've heard, he's kind of running into a similar thing. Uh, he's doing a this is Total War campaign and not getting attacked. AI is just too passive right now, and I don't think it's intentional. I think, I think they just went overboard on some of the changes to anti-player bias. And again, this is a beta, so it's not surprising that things aren't working perfectly at the moment. But I would definitely be having a little bit more fun here if the AI was putting up a bit more of a challenge. I will say that. I think inherently, though, Nakai is just kind of... Like, he's fun. His battles are really fun. The cross score stacks are really fun. Using Croak. Using all the dinos. It's just fun to roll over things. But I would not say that this campaign is there for people who are looking for just oodles and boodles of strategy. It's probably more true for like Dark Elves, High Elves, those kind of factions that are more about empire building. For Nakai, it's just war. He's a horde. And we're going to go to war with Helmand Gorst. I'm very curious to see how the war is going with Kugath Plaguefather. It seems like he's consolidated his position here. Gotta remember to put my banners down. Newly recruited a bunch of Sacred Cross Gors. Finally decided to invest in some of them. And we are almost to max level Ketsu's Patronage, which casualty replenishment, ward save, melee defense, missile resist for Cross Gors. Yeah, they're gonna be real strong after this one. So after that, I think we'll go towards Zolanka for the Winds of Magic buffs. Because we do have some powerful casters in our armies as well. Okay, so Kugath is getting his ass beat. Hardcore. Helmand Gorse is rolling over him. Um, 
in terms of tempo to the old ones. Let's get that extra move range. And here's a great example of what I'm talking about where the AI doesn't want to fight. And where it's quite annoying. So I've been trying to catch Helm and Gorse for the last many turns. And I get that my army is very strong. It makes sense that the AI wouldn't necessarily want to fight it. But they've now put themselves in a horrible position in their efforts to get away from me. And now I'm just going to be able to kill them one by one. Instead of taking the fight on with 3v1 stack, having the garrison ready there to reinforce, they just retreated into the sea, they're taking attrition from Kugath, they're probably going to get killed by him now too, whatever stack I don't kill. Like, what are you doing, son? Kugath has some other stacks here up north. I don't think he's going to be able to take any of these old one settlements from me. I'm making so much money because of the... Um, those upgrades on his tech tree that give my vassals more tribute, which I seem to be getting a lot. It basically goes up by 5% each time. It goes from like 40 to 45 to 50, but I seem to be getting way more money than 5% extra tribute each time I invest in one of those. So that might be, I'm not sure if it's bugged or not, but I'm getting like crazy income now, 10,000 a turn. Probably gonna have to go to war with Zhao Ming. And Burning Wind Nomad soon, too. They don't seem to like me very much anymore. So, Snow Rule will have some things to do. I'll, I need to upgrade his army for sure. Like, at turn 70, this is kind of a weak stack. I've just been lazy. But, yeah, we'll go towards Hanyu Port. We'll probably start this war with Zhao Ming. Next turn. But, Gorst, what are you doing, buddy? I was really trying to get a cool fight this playthrough. With Nakai versus Kugath or Nakai versus Gorst. I don't think it's going to happen. Like, he's going to retreat. He's going to leave Gorst isolated. Gorst will die. The other army is now in the water, so he can't reinforce. They have nowhere to go. Like, they should have just attacked me. They probably would not have won the fight, but they would have had a much better chance. Now they've taken so much attrition and so many losses that the auto-resolve is just incredibly easy. Yeah. Like... That's kind of, that's the best example I have so far of the pacificity of the AI. They just do not want to engage you ever. And perhaps even worse, they really want to hang out in their own cities and then not really build much of an empire or recruit higher tier units. Now, there were some, there's some Crypt Ghouls, uh, Crypt Horrors, a couple of Grave Guard. I saw a Vargulf and stuff. I don't know how much of that was due to raise dead or not. Vampires might be in a better situation than most because they have those raised dead pools. But yeah, overall, the Kai campaign, it's been fun. It's going to be a lot more fun when the AI starts actually attacking you and creating scarier armies and empires. Uh, the location for his playthrough is amazing. I mean, look at my crosswords. They're, they're so strong right now. They're terrifying. They're getting debuffed by melee attack. Let's not be reckless. Um, they literally do cause terror now too, which is fun. So yeah, visually, Cathay is absolutely stunning. I think it's one of the best, maybe the best looking portion of the campaign map in Immortal Empires. It looks incredible. Uh, there are some fun elements of gameplay right now, some that clearly need some work. But let me know what you guys want to see in terms of Immortal Empires gameplay, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.